Hello, everyone. We're back with another episode of LMS Cast. I'm Joshua Millage, and I'm joined today with Christopher Badgett. And today we're talking about how to embed audio in your WordPress LMS. And uh, this is something that uh, I've been doing for a long time with our sister podcast, Infusioncast. So, Chris, why is it important to use so many different forms of media? Let's start there before we get into the tactic today. Well, there's two primary reasons for that, and we've done a separate podcast episode about each of these, but real quickly, they are, number one, uh, our main goal is always to focus on the learner learning, and when they're Mm -hmm. getting multimedia forms of content, whether that be text, video, and audio, you're adapting to different learning styles, so people really connect with the different formats. So that's, that's a big reason. The other reason is when you create that multimedia learning content you can also charge more money for it it's more valuable yeah there, it's, there's more perceived value in the marketplace and uh those are the two main reasons that's amazing well let me take it into the tactic today because i have been podcasting and using audio for a really long time and there's a lot of different options i think for people to to go and depending on what they're trying to do and how much protection or um how much uh freedom they want to to have with their audio, there's a lot of different options. So I think first and foremost, you can utilize your WordPress um, media hosting capabilities if you want. And there's some mm-hmm. advantages and disadvantages. Advantages is, is, is you're keeping everything in one spot. Um, do you happen to know off the top of your head any good audio player plugins? I um, personally don't. There's a bunch of free ones that are on the WordPress repository. There's one called Zen something I've used before. But okay. the interesting thing that's happened lately with WordPress is you no longer need that stuff. I mean, you can, you can yeah. get it if you want it because that, that audio plugin has a better design or whatever. But by default now, when you click the Add Media button on WordPress, whether that's a lesson or any poster page for that matter, uh, if you upload an MP3, you're going to uh, it'll put in a nice responsive, you know, play button. Oh, really? So they have progress. it built in. It's built in now. Oh, wow, and, that's amazing. And, and but like you said, there are some constraints that come with. Yeah. Um, if you go that route, and you have a high traffic site, and also with WordPress uh, Media Library itself and the type of hosting you're on. Right. I think by default you start out with a 64 megabyte upload limit. Yeah. So if your audio gets too big, you're going to crush, run into that limit, which can be raised in some cases on your hosting account. But it's you're starting to get into where you should really be getting into premium audio hosting. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I, I think that's the next step would be premium audio hosting. And there's a lot of options for that nowadays too. Um, If you're coming from a podcast angle, like you want to utilize content in your online course, you want to protect it, but you you also want to uh, maybe utilize it as a marketing channel. There's two main players in the podcast media hosting space. There is um, SoundCloud, which is kind of the new new man, new boy on the block, I guess you could say. And then there's Libsyn. And Libsyn's been around for years. Um, they've, they're pretty bulletproof. I mean, I, I like Libsyn for a lot of reasons. I don't use Libsyn, but I like Libsyn. I think that, uh, if you're, if you're, if you're kind of like pure podcasting, go Libsyn and, and then in your courses, um, you actually might want to utilize something else because Libsyn's geared towards giving you an RSS feed for syndication. You could utilize Libsyn, have a sub channel and, make all of that protected and embed that using their players, but you're just going to be spending more money. So in this use case, I would say Libsyn's probably not the best. Um, if it's pure podcasting, Libsyn's awesome. Now, if you want a hybrid of both, and actually the the one that I utilize is SoundCloud, because SoundCloud allows for, and they're, they're not as advanced in the podcasting space as Libsyn. Um, so it, you, you need to be a little techy if you want to use it for podcasting. Like you have to do some kind of hacky things to get it out there. But if you're just utilizing it for um, for an LMS purpose, it's amazing. You would upload the audio. They have these beautiful um, HTML5 
audio players. They look gorgeous. They are, uh, one of the coolest features, I think, is that you can actually drop comments in along the waveform. So, you know, you have this waveform that goes up and down. And as you're talking, as you're giving your lecture, you, you if, you're, if your lecture is at like minute seven, then, you know, someone could actually jump in and comment at minute seven. Oh, you know, hey, professor, or hey, Chris, what, what did you actually mean by, you know, X, Y, and Z? And that adds a, like a social aspect that is pretty awesome. Um, so, and then you can, you know, you could utilize that for, uh, podcasting also. So you could keep some tracks private, some tracks public. You could have the public tracks go into your RSS feed. Um, if people are really interested in podcasting, I'm happy to make a, a video about podcasting as a mechanism for marketing for your LMS. That would be a really fun video and I could walk through kind of a how-to of how that works. Um, but I, I think for the sake of this episode and to keep it concise, I would highly recommend SoundCloud as the number one pick for uh, for educational um, media hosting and embedding. It's just really flexible. Uh, if someone were to access your site on their mobile device, they'd be able to play it no problem there. Um, and I know some people might be going, well, you know, SoundCloud doesn't have anything. You know, if I go to the site, it has nothing to do with LMS. And they're right. It, it's mainly geared towards musicians and artists right now, not even podcasters. But the platform is so dynamic that I think it works really, really well. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, well, one of the other things that we run into is people uh, with their WordPress learning management system, they want people to be able to take the courses on their phone when they're offline. Yeah. And one, you can't really do that without going into a native like iPhone, Android app type situation. But what you can do is also offer an audio download <laughs> on an individual lesson. Yeah. So there's a download link. So the person can download that audio file for that lesson and go for a run and listen to it, that sort of thing. They don't have to be connected to the internet. So for that, I don't know about SoundCloud, SoundCloud but in the past, if it's small enough, I would put that uh, audio file in my WordPress media library and create a download link. Mm -hmm. And if it was bigger, I would put it in Dropbox in a mm -hmm. public folder and have a download link so they could pull it down from Dropbox. So, yeah, those are some. That's that's another great way to to do things for sure. Um, well, Chris, I think this is a really helpful episode. I think a lot of people are going to uh, enjoy figuring out how to embed audio. I think it's a little different than video. I think there's some advantages and some disadvantages. But I, you know, our recommendation is when you're creating an online course to use all the different forms of media because you don't know exactly how your student is going to learn. Um, so that is huge, 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 huge. And I think it's really uh, important to to be considerate of how everyone learns. I'm an audio guy, so I'm a little uh, biased in this episode. I like audio, and I like audio for the simple reason, and this is something that a lot of people don't think about. I listen to th things in double or triple time. So I have conditioned myself to not be thrown off by the fact that when I do that, people sound like chipmunks. Yeah. Because uh, that doesn't matter. I, I, I've, I, can, I can get through so much more information. It's like, it's like being in the Matrix scene where they, you know, they put the jack in the back of the head and then down. I feel like that's what I'm doing when I listen yeah. to things in double or triple speed. But that's something that you know, people don't consider. So uh, I, would, I would highly recommend putting audio out there for weirdos like me who listen to it in double time. I can get through your course faster. It keeps me engaged. And uh, it just helps with my ADD, you know. That's that's at the at the end of the day. That's why I'm doing it. So cool. Do you have any final thoughts for the audience here, Chris? Sure. I would say if you're just creating your first audio lesson or, or a full audio course, it's important just not to get too wrapped up in all the fancy mics and equipment and stuff you can get. You can literally record your first audio lesson on your smartphone, on your iPhone, on your Android. Yeah. All computers have some kind of audio recorder built into it, like GarageBand on a Mac. I'm not sure what the Windows equivalent is, but mm -hmm. it's just one of those things where you just got to do it. And then over time, you'll continue to make better and better quality audio. And you, if you happen to be watching this video version of this podcast, you'll see Joshua with his in his sound room with his <laughs> uh, more advanced audio equipment. But just start. That's the most important thing. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Well, all right, folks. Well, we would love to hear your feedback on this. You can reach us over at lmscast.com and uh, just click this episode. Leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Um, but until next time, we'll talk to you then.